Ooh, what does this do? Interaction, or as I like to call it, mmm, clicky clicky, is one of the defining aspects of a game. Without it, you might as well just be making movies. Hey, I'm Nagi, let's make some buttons do some sh- Before we begin, let's see what we need to do. Our interaction system would consist of three parts. The first would be a way for the player to find the interactable objects. The second part would be the objects that we'll interact with. Then, the last part would be the result of the interaction which could be something like opening doors, or starting a spaceship, or making my viewers subscribe. Picking up where we left off in the last video, we have a player that can move around the level and do what the majority of the world is currently doing about climate change. Also, I made a few changes to the level, which of course you can find the link to in the description. Now, we need to add the first part of an interaction system, which is the ability of the player to detect interactable objects, or simply put, Let's give a player some eyes. Well, in video games, to detect objects, we use a ray cast, which, as the name suggests, casts a ray. Kinda like lasers, but without the superpowers. Using this, we can not only detect if it's colliding with something, but also what it's colliding with and where it's colliding. Okay, let's select the head of the player, add a ray cast to it, and rename it to interact ray. In the inspector, enable the ray cast and set its direction to negative 4 along the z-axis. Now, add a script to it. I'm keeping the code in a separate file saved in the player folder to keep the logic organized as you should for all your projects. In the physics process function, let's check if the ray is colliding with something and if so, let's print something. Run the game and if you look into the console, you'll see that it detects everything. Now, let's add a texture rig node to the player scene to be used as a crosshair. I'll put a crosshair image I made as its texture and position it to the center of the screen. Now, instead of printing things to console, let's show the status through a label node. Rename it to prompt and set its properties through the inspector. Give it some placeholder text, set its alignment to center, set a custom font if you want, and finally, position the label to the center of the screen. In the code, set its text to an empty string right before the condition check, and inside the condition check, set the text to something else. And we can detect objects. Now, let's make objects to detect. Create a new scene with the static body 3D as a root node. Now, I have a mesh object ready to be displayed as a button, so I'll add it to the scene. Then, add a collision shape to it and set its shape to be a box that fits the button. Let's save the scene and add a script to the root node. In the script, let's start by defining the class name to be interactable and then going to the interactory script. Here, we'll check if the detected object is of the class interactable and set the prompt to be the name of the object. Let's instance a button scene a few times in the level and test it out. You'll see that the label displays the name of the buttons. Now, let's make it so we can define what each button prompt should display. In the code, let's define a couple of export variables, one for the prompt message and one for the action that will trigger the button. I'll set their default values to interact and interact. Someone should keep a track of how many times I say the word interact. Make sure to add the action in the input map as well. Now, define a function getPrompt which will find out the key name for the given action and return a string containing the prompt message and the key to press. I'm using actions instead of keys so that it's easier to change the input map of the game without changing the key prompt for every single button that uses it. Back in the interactory script, set the value of the prompt text by calling the getPrompt function. Now, we can easily set the prompt message and the input action for each button separately through the inspector and it works as expected. With that done, let's interact with a button. Hi. N nice weather today, right? <laughs> That's not how we interact with buttons. In the button script, define a function interact that takes a body as its parameter and prints a simple message. This body would be the character that interacts with the button, like the player, an enemy, or Robotnik. Back in the interact ray script, check if the prompt action has just been pressed and call the interactable's interact function, passing the interact ray's owner, which in this case is the player. Run the game and interact with a couple of buttons to see the corresponding messages printed in the console. So far so good. Finally, define a signal interacted in the interactable script and replace a print statement with an image signal call, passing the body with it. With this, we have a button object that can be used for a number of different purposes using signals. Let's start with something simple though. I'll be using my dialog add-on to create a simple dialog tree and load it in a dialog box. You can learn more about it in my previous video. Now, I'll attach a script to the parent of the dialog box and connect the signal interacted from a button to the script. In the script, call the start function of the dialog box and set the physics and the input process of the body to false. I'll save the reference to the body in a variable. Remember, the body here is the player and we're setting the processes to false to ensure the player does not move while the dialog is displayed. 
Now, connect the dialog finish signal of the dialog box to the script, set the physics and the input processes back to true and remove the reference of the player. With that, a player can not only detect the button but also interact with it to display a dialog box. Fun fact, replace the button with the character and you have an NPC for your game. Another thing we can make a button do is open and close doors. For that, I have this door scene prepared with a skeleton and an animation player with animations to close and open the door. Now, for the door to collide, I'll add bone attachments for each bone in the skeleton and add static bodies to them. Position the collision shapes correctly and add an animation tree to the scene route. In the inspector, set it to active and assign a state machine to it. In the graph, add two animations and connect them together. Make sure to set the transition to at end. Add a script to the door that consists of a variable to set the state of the door and a variable playback used to store the state of the animation tree. In the ready function, assign the value of playback from the animation tree. Then define a toggle door function that toggles the state of the door and plays the corresponding animation using playback.travel. Once again, all we need to do is connect the interacted signal of a button to the toggle door function of the door and voila, we can open and close the doors. Now, let's take this system to another level. <laughs> See what I did there. Now, I created this moving platform using Reuse's tutorial with a few modifications of my own. Basically, the scene consists of a kinematic body that's just the platform and a path node with two points defining the two positions the platform will move between. Inside the path node, there's a path polar node and inside that is a remote transform node that will move the platform. Also, there's a static body there just for decoration. As for the code, the platform script contains a reference to the path polar node a variable to store the target offset and a function to toggle the target offset between 0 and 1. Define a new tween and run the tween to move the unit offset of the path follow to the target offset in a duration of 2 seconds. Now, disconnect the button signal to the toggle function. Oh, one last thing you need to do is change the move and slide function in the player script to move and slide with snap and pass another up vector. This makes sure the player doesn't slide off the platform when it moves. What's more, you can add another button and connect it to the platform and it just works. What's even more, you can change the points of the path to make it a horizontal platform. What's even more, you can press the subscribe button and it changes color. Okay, enough learning for now or else I'll end up confusing you even more than I already have. So yeah, that's all I have for this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you have doubts or questions, make sure to drop them down below in the comments. And if not, I'd love to hear how you use these things in your game. Also, since Gurud 4 recently launched its beta version, I'm considering doing some future videos using it. Let me know what you think about it. Now, as is evident from all my last videos, I still haven't decided on an outro dialogue. So, drink your cookies and eat your milk. What?